apologize for this video quality. All right. I didn't really mean to record it. That's pretty dark. Huh, let's see what happens. Hey folks, thanks for coming. Uh, 38 Linux boxes equals one asynchronous cellular automata. That's my clickbait title for this update, but it's true. Uh, we just saw it and you know we're gonna have more. We're gonna have over a hundred uh, Linux boxes equals one cellular automata. Not exactly sure when. So I've got a bunch of stuff for today. I've got some more video about the building of what we, the hardware layout that we just saw. Uh, that's going to go on a little bit. We'll take a look at that. Uh, and then I want to give just a quick little uh, update uh, on the research stuff, on the software redesign for the event engine, and then uh, try to do a live outreach demo. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. So let's look at the video and then come back. Super going ball. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> I get it now. Let's just try to pull it out. Oh, that was easy enough. So this is eight uh, pieces that meet with themselves. There's the sticking out. Well, let's just open it up because it's time. You guys, we're sending you in, guys. These pieces go through those holes and then they all go up. And if all goes well, without too much trouble, they uh, snap in like that. And that, that's pretty damn strong for, you know, plastic. The red and the blue. Uh -uh. Here we are. So that goes in like that. Oh, what do you know? Actually managed to... Oh, uh, but this one is... In, there it goes. So we can tell these should... <laughs> the arms on. doing the time looks okay the ones that are pinched in actually hold a single tile whereas the ones that are pinched out this is the bottom of the tile above and this one is for the top of the tile to below do the entire ring lotus uh, in the classic originally visioned 
like flower form, it's going to take 15 rows nearly to the floor in this position. So we're going to have to raise this whole thing up and find another place for it and so on. So this is all, you know, way this works. The uh, whole point of the grid framework is to provide something that actually locks them all together at the tile level. We're just, we're just going to own that. But now my... <laughs> My focus is on, you know, okay, how can I make it easier to disassemble and reassemble? Because I see that in my future. So each lotus by itself needs five pinches of height. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Okay, guys. Okay, next step is uh, start hooking these together laterally and putting in all the feet in the overlap direction. So these things press fit laterally is what it is. But it's really, once you get all of these going, strong. Alright, so that's it. That's now. Here's our feet. Uh, I'm sorry, that's our claws, I guess I'll call them. So that's a full ring lotus where I've now put a grid on top of it. Alright, so that's not really a very good way to do it. But I think what that means is is that then we'll have to extend some more off this direction this later here that's going to be a tile like that there's their little barbs and their ends so here we go See now here, here's what's happened. Here's an example of what happened when I disassembled, busted one of the claws off, and uh -uh, so that's another debtor. The E and the F series, which are not the most recent ones. Why don't we use the most recent ones uh, of the latest G series tiles? Possible. Okay. These are both A's. There's two different kinds of displays. it for our overflow. Isn't that beautiful? Uh, <laughs> I mean, this project is, well, who knows where the hell it ends up, who knows where to, when, when the clock runs out, but uh, it's an actual thing. <laughs> we actually built these things. Not, um, That's the lotus. One surrounded by six, surrounded by twelve. Nineteen, the mystical power. What shall we do now? <laughs> I mean, we could plug this thing up and try it. One, two, three, four, five. It doesn't go. An extra half a gauge. In fact, we will need later anyway, way down in the corner. So. <sighs> well, heck. Uh, uh, Let's hang one more strap. I'm just going to go with a regular hanger. And 
this is the last set of hangers in this box. I think we got one more box of hangers. Theoretically, past Dave counted all this crap out already. interface with a data only connector to remind us that that is a power frontier destined to be constructed somewhere. Um, now we just need to plug up the data and power connections, the within power zone connections here, the within, within power zone connections These here. These are the some DP connectors uh, until I find some reason not to. Okay, well this is already going to be... Well, did I have that wrong? Jeez, had it upside down. <laughs> well, but thank you, shrouded header. No damage was done. Now these, the, again, these tiles uh, have not been tested uh, for intertile activity at all, and history says that there may well be some intertile connectors that don't work for whatever reason so we may be facing swapping well we probably will uh, be facing swapping some tiles out in the middle of this grid excuse really not to fire up 19 tiles that should be running Hugene if actually everything comes up. So I'll tuck this back and all right so you ready for this here we go. Alright, now this is important actually, and I can already see an issue here. If you can see this, there's a yellow line up here, yellow line down here. That means uh, these two tiles, this one's southwest, this one's north, southeast, this one's northwest, are not communicating. Now, it may just be... because this connector isn't seated well and it may be because there's a problem and that's what we're here to look into this is the one for pulling all right so I am going to power this one off If, the, if we actually had a simulation. All right, there it is. All clear, all clear. So we are pointing the fickle finger of fate at G3140.
and, and that's it. And so from there, I uh, tried the Eugene that we saw at the opener. Uh, um, for me, the only the exciting part about that was that I actually powered up Lotus number two while uh, Eugene was running on uh, Lotus number one, and it actually survived. Now, again, that's not something that will work in the general case because the software is just too brittle. But uh, in the special case of just having stuff come up once, it actually does work. Uh, um, so we have 38 tiles now tested. Uh, the ones around the edge haven't been completely tested, but uh, they've been somewhat tested uh, in, in, in two Lotuses. Uh, you know, I, I'm starting to get a little bit of a clue, actually, based on problems from before, that uh, I think it's the southeast tends to be the one that has the trouble. So if I ran into another circumstance like that, where I see a southeast northwest thing failing to communicate in the future, I think I'm going to replace the southeast <laughs> one first. Uh, uh, why that would be, I don't know. Uh, um, so, and then we've got 60 more that have been tested individually. Those are going to go into Lotus 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, uh, and 7. It's <sighs> a long way to go. This thing is going to be pretty big. Uh, uh, it's, it's going to be something like 5 feet by 5 feet, which, you know, doesn't sound like that much, but when you're right there, it's significant. Uh, we got older tiles to... Um, to eat, refresh, we may be able to just plug them in and use them because the image, the underlying image, hasn't actually changed that much, but we'll see about that. Uh, and we had one a board failure during the individual testing. We had one board failure during the assembly of Lotus 1. The next steps on this, I mean, the, the science fiction paperback bookshelf wall that I'm building these things on now I'm not sure it's going to do it uh, for holding up the whole, well, I mean, just, I don't know. Or, or to, it remains to be seen exactly where to build this thing. Uh, uh, for one, we're going to have the whole Lotus and we'll have enough cooling and enough power, enough room to get away and get a good shot at it with the camera. And of course, we've got to get the camera working better and so on. And we can't do any of this until we can get the software stuff in better shape. Uh, so that's where we were. That was the image I dropped into the middle of the thing. That's, so we have Lotus 1 and Lotus 2 now. Uh, the one over on the far side there, you know, we're going to have to, eh, screw it, uh, have to add more hangers uh, outside the grid to make room for that. But, you know, step by step. Lotus 3, I think, is the center Lotus uh, coming in. So on the research front, uh, uh, if, you know, getting my fingers all bleeding from plugging in claws and trying to pry them out again is a uh, development well then the software that redesign is uh research uh i don't have a whole lot to say yet because i mean i've got lots of thoughts i've done some spikes some little coding experiments just to try things out but it all might just get tossed in the trash uh, down the road but i do have some emerging thoughts and so the key design idea that's changing in my head is be UDP-ish, not TCP-ish. Now that's, you know, networking jargon. Uh, TCP, the whole idea of it is that it's a reliable stream. If you say the alphabet A, B, C, D, E, X, Y, Z, uh, the other person at the end of the thing will get A, B, C, B, 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 X, Y, Z even if the underlying layer loses packets and has to retransmit them and do who knows what and so forth, TCP promises. Whereas UDP says, I'm going to take each little bit, A, B, C, D, E, F. Uh, I will send it. If I lose it, I'm not going to tell you. And I want to switch the event processing to UDP-ish because it's just more honest. Uh, in the peer-to-peer -peer best effort world, you really can't do TCP. You really can't guarantee it. The, problem, the problems just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger until a guarantee that TCP offers breaks. Whereas UDP says, you know, in fact, when you use UDP in the actual internet and so forth, you know, it, best effort delivery is what UDP does. And most of the packets, the vast majority of the packets get through unless the network is really stressed. And that's what we want for event processing step by step. Best effort cache updates. And the exciting thing for me is, uh, and I'll talk about this next time, but uh, 
the uh, the idea of the ring oscillator. I've now got a spike where if you've got three tiles that are connected one, two, three, and a little triangle, they are doing a ring oscillator around the corner, around three tiles. They're passing a shared clock around them so that rather than having the whole racing to see who can have an event, what they're doing is saying, you know, well, it's your turn if you want it. You've got it for this long and then pass it on. Then it goes on to the next guy and the next guy with a little bit of randomization to skip turns so that it doesn't get too much patterns and i've got a spike where that's actually working and i think it may help you know we'll see but we'll talk about that in the future so for now uh let's go on to outreach so you know i've been working on the science fiction stuff since 2019 i think you know first a novel then a novel again and then turn chapter two of the novel into a short story the short story has been done for a while done search quiet wake vaughn joy manon is the author uh uh the pseudonym i'm using for it uh, um and you know so i've been sending out to you know select <laughs> friends and victims uh, who have read it and they provided great input and you know the the story has gotten a lot better uh, but I could diddle with it forever so the idea is need a deadline and uh, I'm gonna send it off to uh, Asimov's science fiction magazine uh, it, not the biggest science fiction magazine apparently but it, it's the one that's sort of closest nearest dearest to my heart I mean I've got my my probably biggest uh, you know celebrity encounter story was that actually you know I shared a cab with Isaac Asimov in New York City many many years ago it's a short cab ride but we were both going to the same meeting and we ended up going to the wrong place so we shared a cab to get to the right place to do the meeting and Asimov Science Fiction uh, says they'll turn it around fairly quickly, like five weeks. So the idea is, let's submit it. Let's submit Search Quiet Wake to Asimov Science Fiction magazine right now. <laughs> okay. So, you know, here it is, you know, the, the writer's guidelines, uh, you know, the, the amount of money they pay, the amount of money they pay, you know, I don't I don't even know how to guess whether there's any chance that that uh, they'll be interested in search quiet wake this particular story uh, I do know that if they are it'll be because it got a whole lot better uh, since I first started showing it to a few people but you know for it's totally not about the money all right so here we go uh, online submissions so I haven't tried this yet because obviously I didn't have anything to submit so but let's do it uh -uh. Exactly, Shaq. All right, the title is Search Quiet Wake. Uh, they say the cover letter is optional and you're supposed to have your publishing history. And, you know, my publishing history is not science fiction. At least it wasn't intended to be. So I'm going to just leave that out. Um, and now here it is. 15, 15, 10, 33. I think that's it. You know, this shows my uh, incredible commitment to submitting this story to, to uh, magazines. I've actually produced a doc file. Uh, uh, I produced it using OpenOffice, but still, it's doc format. So here we go, uh, uh, I guess. Let's see what happens. Cover letter required. They said it was optional. Oh, dear. What am I supposed to... cover letter is optional right if you choose to include it it should include the length of your story uh, uh, and your publishing history okay uh, uh, story length about 4600 words no prior published science fiction mm -hmm. Let's take a look all right so we try again <laughs> oh lost our file it's still 1515 doc that's right all right here we go 
Thank you for submission and email and ticket. You cannot receive this email within two hours. Okay, we'll see. Uh, uh, five weeks with a range covering five weeks to three months. They didn't mention three months before. You should expect a quick response. Okay, well, there it is. Uh, so we've now submitted uh, a science fiction story. Uh, I mean, I really want, uh, you know, the the folks who've been following the T2 Tile Project to to, to, to get a look at the story. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure how to do it. I've been trying not to put it out in public since I'm trying to sell the first North American serial rights. All right, the clock is ticking. Uh, uh, three, five weeks to three months, we should expect a quick re response. That's it. Yeah, um, and so, uh, next time. Um, oh, yeah. So, you know, once again, uh, the opening bumper uh, with the computing creed, first be robust, then as correct as possible and as efficient as necessary. Uh, uh, I, I'm still open. I'm still looking for folks who, who, who might want to make a new one. Andrew suggested I should put the details in the uh, Discord server, and I didn't because I didn't. Uh, uh, but, you know, I just wanted to say one thing, you know, that, that I, I actually have uh, a history of sort of, you know, like, no, never liking anything unless I did it myself, uh, which is a real problem. But uh, what I just wanted to say about this one is that, you know, as long as we, it, for this particular thing, as long as we can get the words in uh, um, and not run into any copyright issues, you know, I promise I will try it out uh, uh, in the in a, a future T Tuesday update uh, uh, and we'll see, you know, what, what people think. Uh, um, and, but that's it. And uh, beyond that, uh, so for next time, I want to have, which February 1, uh, I want to have some more explicit tile event spikes. I want to have a little bit more confidence that maybe this idea uh, uh, is got legs. Maybe it's got a chance of working, although I haven't actually, uh, I'm not going to hold myself to actually having events happen or all that because there's a ton of work to do. Uh, uh, once again, have some fun and maybe, maybe build more grid. I don't know. We've got to, we've got to figure out where this thing is going to have its kind of temporary permanent home, uh, uh, that we can, you know, get, uh, all of the physical properties of it working out. That's it. Uh, uh, thank you so much for coming, whether you're here, uh, live for the stream or you're checking it out later. Uh, I hope things are going all right, uh, at your end and, uh, I hope to see you next time.